I have Judge Talmagist sitting here next to me. Glad to be with you again. I appreciate it very much. It's been a couple of weeks, so maybe maybe there maybe people aren't tired of me yet. No, no, not at all. We're going to make this a regular thing. I tell you, sure. We, well, you're going to have to bring me back one time. See, I'm going going. I'm going to spill the beans here. So I went to Frog Guy, Alabama. And saw Philip Welch, who lives on the Tallapoosa River, and uh, I got two pint jars of sagum syrup that he makes himself, and I was going to bring it to Joey uh-huh. and April Marie, and they are in my cabinet, and of course <laughs> I forgot it. So they've got to have me back if they want some. It's technically Chambers County, uh, but it is right around the corner from where my mama lives. Sagum syrup. The only thing I can think of that we were sideways with the Secretary of State's office on was on uh, no excuse absentee voting which he was for it, not for it for it I don't, that I don't. was the I, I i have a good great respect for uh what john merrill has done as secretary of state he's been a good secretary that, of state but that was just weird well i just think they weren't anticipating the blowback they got you know we our association voted to oppose it we so we were in that committee and our we sent um that's funny enough from pike county judge bunn michael bunn who took west allen's place down uh, or up from Pike County to Montgomery, and we're in this committee, and he just, you know, is taking this apart that this is not, there's no reason, this is just an avenue for for for, for making, you know, absentee voting and uh, something that everybody could do, so early voting. So turn, it turned into, and this is what I talked to the secretary about, because it happened in Jefferson County, it turned into de facto early voting. They had food trucks and bans, so you supposedly, uh, too, you know, scared of COVID, so you can't go to your polling place uh, during election day and instead right. you all people were being vanned and bust and, and listening I, to the music and hanging out in Jefferson County. And I think the secretary was thinking, I, I don't know uh, for sure, but I know that they supported it at that meeting. And and then I think swiftly very quickly they decided they didn't support it anymore <laughs> and so uh I, other than that we were all on the same page so i don't mean to I, I bring up the one thing because it's something that different from his office or from you know election-minded people but we were all in lockstep in a in a in opposing um uh curbside voting and opposing unrestricted early voting you know we we were they were very helpful with that uh, secretary representative allen was very helpful with that yeah. and so the, that was the only issue and then you know he got right with jesus quick <laughs> yes he did and here's the deal we have an election day and it it's important and if it's not important enough for you to show up or if you can't go through the process to vote absentee maybe you don't need to be voting anyway well, that's a very unpopular opinion that i agree with <laughs> right the sheriff apparently took a check from the realtor, realty association. A campaign check. A campaign check. Well, it's the realtor's pack. I mean, it's it's the definition of a campaign check, and he deposited it in his personal account. And and anybody that's ever been in a campaign or run a campaign or been a part of a campaign knows that you go ho- I opened an account at a whole separate bank. Exactly. Right? Like, like I am happy with the bank I use, but I, just, I went to a whole different bank. Like, I, I don't even want them on the—I almost went to a whole different town. I mean, you don't <laughs> want to keep those funds as separate as they can be. Right. Like, it's a quick way to go to jail. And I had a, had a good friend of mine. His name is uh, Lance High. She is a Republican consultant in uh, Birmingham area, okay. but all over the state. Uh, he's running my friend Deborah, Deborah Jones' campaign for the Supreme Court. He ran Sarah Stewart's campaign for the Supreme Court. But when I talked about running for probate judge, he's, I've known him for over 10 years, and he told me, and I've always repeated it, is there's no amount of money worth going to an Alabama penitentiary for, period. And that's the truth. Period. And it's a quick way to get it as a politician if you are a public office, if you take people, if you take the public's money or you misuse campaign money. And look, man, people are dying all over, and all over these prisons in Alabama, I'm telling you. And I encourage everybody to pick up, just Google it, and read the Fed's report on Alabama prisons. It's mind-blowing. I mean, no matter how bad you think it is, it's mind-blowing. And so, you know... No amount of money is worth going to an Alabama prison for a period. I'll go work at a 7-Eleven somewhere. It, it is not, it's not worth it. The liberals are going to call for everything to be shut down again, and there's no way that's happening. Well, it, look, it didn't work the first time. It did not work the first time. I mean, time. look, we've, I, I don't blame, you know, people in Montgomery for trying to figure out how to do something, you know, because we didn't know where this was going. It was not a hard, it, you know, nobody, nobody ran for governor, nobody ran for probate judge, nobody ran for whatever office they hold thinking that we were going into a a a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic that hadn't happened since the 1918s but 
we did it. We did what they they did. They shut down. It was supposed to be two weeks. Two right. weeks to flatten the curve, right? Right, right, right. We we shut down. We did all that. We wore masks all the time. And uh, I can't tell where it made a discernible difference for states that didn't do it. So I don't think we're going. I don't think Alabama's going down that path again. Now you may see some of your more liberal cities go down that path, but you know if you. I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't hold it against people who are just doing whatever they could figure out when nobody knew how to tackle this, right? But we know now. We can look back and see, okay, this made no discernible difference whatsoever, and these small businesses can't take it again. It, it, it absolutely, and the, 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 the stuff that Trump did helped them. You know, I, I have small business owners that I'm friends with, that I went to college with, that, you know, it helped them keep the doors open. Right. And it helped them try to keep people on getting paid. But, it, you know, they didn't make any money themselves. They just were able to make sure their employees ate. Payroll protection right. is what it was, pay, right? Pay, pay, paycheck protection, payroll protection, yeah. And so we can't do it again. It absolutely cannot happen again. And if we keep spending money like we're spending, the money they're sending is not going to be worth anything anyway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> all we need is love, folks. That's, that's my answer to CRT. All we need is love. Love don't make, love don't buy grits. Love don't. Yeah, love but, don't buy grits. You can't buy grits with love, so that's not all you need, because I need grits. Yeah, but people will give you grits if you give them enough love. Talmadge um, East, I'm so. making you come in every week, as long <laughs> as you're going to drop gems like that one. Preferably stone ground. If you cook against the grits, I don't know if we can talk anymore. <laughs> but don't they take longer to cook? Nah, stone ground grits still got a little bit of the cornhole in it, I'm telling you now. Mm. You don't even need butter. I mean, they're just amazing. That's not it. I put I put cheese in my grits. Is that a crime against humanity? No, as long as you don't put sugar in them. But but cheese is for people who don't know how to make grits. I mean, they're okay. It's just unrequired. It's like it's like a, it's like bacon on a homegrown tomato sandwich. It's delicious. But if the tomato is good, it's not required. Interesting. The things you learn from a Tallapoosa judge. Next time I come, I'll bring you some sagam, and if I still got tomatoes coming in, I'll bring you homegrown tomatoes. Tomatoes are my... I will eat a tomato like it's an apple. Well, I, I will too, and I got a tomato. garden full of them. You guys have been listening to April Marie Fogel with Judge Talmadgeist.